Hey, Steve Stein here, and today what we're going to be doing is looking at Old Time Rock and Roll by Bob Seger. Now, this song is going to be using a G, a C, and a D chord. And it's okay if you play your G or C or D a little bit different than I do. I'm just going to show you how I play this and how I teach it to people. Again, the most important thing is finding some music that you can have some fun with. So, we're going to be playing G, C, and D. And you might play your G and C like this, or you might play your G with just three fingers. It's okay. All right? The basic premise of this song is that you're going G, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C. So basically, if you think about it, you're going G for two measures, C for two measures, D for two measures, and then back to G for two measures, which I always refer to as a sandwich when I'm teaching these things. So people remember that you're ending with G and you're also going to start again with G. So if I play it kind of in real time here, you're going to be doing this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to start all over, so we're going to hit that again. Okay, now let's start developing the rhythm a little bit. What do we want to do with this rhythm? Well, we can always start by just doing whole notes like I just did. But maybe we start doing this. One, two, three, four. And then maybe we start adding some up strums in between. So we make a pattern that looks something like this. So right there, I'm just playing down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. If you've seen many of my videos, you know I talk a lot about strumming patterns and how oftentimes as players, we don't really think in terms of strumming patterns. They're nice to learn when you first start learning how to play. And we certainly use them in certain songs, but there's other times that we just play, we just strum. But the goal is to understand that once you get the arm moving, it's kind of like a maraca. You want to keep it moving. And depending on when you hit and miss the strings can make all the difference in how interesting the song sounds and how interesting it feels to you as a player. So, uh, you know, if I was playing this song, I wouldn't necessarily develop a strumming pattern. I would just strum whatever I kind of feel like playing. But it's okay if you want to develop something. If that's a little bit difficult, you want to pr practice something. See, now I'm playing down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, and that will work just fine as well. So that really is the entire song, okay? The, the most important thing is, is make sure you separate the chords and the strumming. If you need to, develop those chords. If you're not very good at C or something like that, you need to work on those before you ever worry about trying to play the song. And then the second part is, is figuring out how to strum. Again, you can find videos by me and other people here uh, you know, on social media that you can practice learning how to do better strumming. So you just have to look those things up and practice them a little bit, but you're always going to have two choices. Either you're going to play some sort of strumming pattern, like down, 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 up, down, or something like that, or you're going to just practice doing what I always refer to as organic strumming, okay? Which is just kind of strumming whatever feels good, but understanding that there is a tempo, there is a motion to the, to the uh, movement of your hand that has to match the tempo of the song, right? So if you think about it... right around here. If you need a strumming pattern, you do one, two, three, four. Or whatever. So that is the, the whole song. The only thing is, is every once in a while in the song, instead of playing G, G, C, C, D, D, G, G, sometimes they end with a D chord at the end. And it's okay if you don't hear it and you don't play that last D, 
it's okay. But whenever uh, Bob Seger sings, still like that old time at the very end, sometimes you're going to move to D instead. So you'll be playing this. G. C. D. Right here. Okay. So when I teach the song, most of the time we will leave that last D off if it's confusing for the student. But if it makes sense to you, you can certainly add that in. I would just listen to the song and kind of decide where you think it goes. I hear it a lot towards the middle and the end of the song and in, in less in the, the, uh, the intro. But again, use your ear and decide what you think. So take care, practice hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, Steve Stein here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor and like it and share it. And also make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you're always notified when I release new videos. And lastly, if you have any song requests, please look in the description. There's a link that you can click on and uh, request a song and I'll do my best to get to it as soon as possible.